Hi everyone, welcome to practice problem note 02. I call this one mastering notes payable because it's gonna really put your knowledge of notes payable to the test. Let's take a look. Tiger Inc. recorded the following journal entry to pay off a nine month note with both principal and interest due at maturity. So notes payable got paid off for 500,000. Interest expense was 2,500. I don't tell you what the interest payable was and I don't tell you what the total cash was. Assuming Tiger Inc. has a fiscal year end of December 31st, and notice this journal entry occurred on January 31st, determine one, the interest rate on the note, and two, the total cash paid at maturity. So this is really gonna test whether or not you understand the components of notes and their related interest and how those things are um, calculated over time. So take a moment, pause the video, see if you can reason your way through this, and when you're ready, come on back and I'll walk you through the solution. All right, welcome back. So here we go. How do you solve this? Well, notice that I told you that Tiger Inc. had a fiscal year end of December 31st. And this journal entry was taking place on January 31st. So it has been one month since the fiscal year end. And of course, anytime you have an interest-bearing item on your balance sheet that crosses a year end, you're going to accrue for any interest from that year at the end of the year as, as an adjusting journal entry, which means any interest on this note prior to December 31st would have already been recorded on December 31st. And the interest expense being recorded in this journal entry is only the interest for the month of January, which means this note has $2,500 of interest per month. All right, so let's extrapolate that. If this note is paying $2,500 in interest per month, there are 12 months in a year. Let's get our calculator. 2,500 times 12. This means that this note is racking up 30,000 in interest per year on a $500,000 principal. So divide 30,000 by 500,000. And that shows us that this represents a 6% interest rate, 6% per year interest rate. All right, so that answers A. Now, B asks us, what's the total cash paid off at maturity? Well, we know we're going to pay off this 500,000 principal balance. We know we've got to pay off that 2,500 interest expense. What's missing is the interest payable. But here's the deal. We know that interest is being racked up at 2,500 per month. We know that January represented the final month of nine months in the life of this note which means that on December 31st, when Flyer Inc. hit, uh, sorry, Tiger Inc. hit its year end, Tiger Inc. would have recorded eight months of interest expense. The eight months that came in the prior year versus the one month that came in this year, they would have recorded eight months of interest expense as interest payable because it wasn't being paid yet. So if we take our 2,500 times eight months, times eight. That comes out to $20,000. That is the payable that would have been recorded. So on December 31st, they would have recorded interest expense, interest payable for that 20,000, right? So this interest payable up here is 20,000. Now you're paying it off along with the principal, along with one more month of interest expense, which means the total cash paid it's going to be 522,500, the sum total of the payables and the new expense that you are paying off. And that is the answer to part B. All righty, so that's a tough one. It really requires you to understand how all these things are related, understand what happens when a, a, an interest-bearing item crosses a year end and how those things are tracked on your financial statements. Um, I hope you found it helpful to see it this way, and I hope you join me for another video.